Okay, so let's have Yogi. So Yogi is coming up. Let's see. I have some data on Yogi. Data. Do oh, I sound like a scientist? I have some information. He's about two years old. Uh, he started reacting to other dogs. I'll let you tell, tell more. Come on up on the stage a little bit. Um, ben is going to be the handler, even though Dana often is. But you can see Dana has a... a, a a restriction. Hi, sweetie. Hi, honey. Hello. Hi. So, is this on? So, tell us, tell us a little bit. If you were, why don't you be the speaker? Tell us a little bit about what the problem is. Um, okay. So Yogi is about two years old now. Um, he's really, really, really excitable. Um, everything Hi. stimulates him. <laughs> He barks at other dogs, he lunges. And if he's off leash, how is he? He's good. pretty good. I keep him moving. Um, he has a hard time with like close interactions. So okay. we're always running around the dog park. And we, just so you know, some of you might have seen it earlier. Uh, we, when, when we started working, good boy. When we started working earlier, I said, is he OK? Good boy, good boy. Is he okay with me taking him and working him by, him by himself? He was totally not okay. Absolutely not okay. He started leaping. Um, he started biting the leash in a really sort of desperate kind of a way. So, so he was telling us, I am not comfortable with that. And the way that I tell you I'm uncomfortable is I start buzzing up. And I start doing these um, things that can look sort of playful and fun. You know, we know about fight. We know about flight. There's also freeze, and there's also frenzy. So this is frenzy, or that's not now, but this could be frenzy. We're going to do everything we can to avoid frenzy, because it's not good for him. Um, there, there's a concept in behavior called the rehearsal effect, which is that every time a behavior, all of which have a, middle, a, a, a beginning, a middle, and an end, when the behavior gets to an end in a way that in itself is reinforcing. And there's some behavior, once it starts, the animal can't stop it. Call, almost like a fixed action pattern is the most extreme example of that. When you start yawning, have you ever started yawning and tried to stop it? You cannot stop a yawn mid-yawn. It's not possible. Those of you who are truly empathetic and have a lot of mirror neurons, by the way, are wanting to yawn right now just because I said yawn. Um, the more... The more mirror neurons you have and the more empathetic you are, the more you yawn when you see either people yawn, and I'm going to do it right now, or somebody's yawning over there. Um, so, so we're going to have Ben work yogi. And one thing I will just say now to both of you, which we can't do now, but if you were my clients, this is not where I would start with yogi. Yogi has major arousal issues. And I would start working, first of all, I would talk to you about, about um, physical issues. I would, I would talk to them about diet. Uh, you know, what is he eating? Why is he so easily aroused? What is going on with him that he's so, it's so hard for him to contain himself? That's often a physiological issue. It can be related to diet. It could be related potentially with a medical problem. So that's something to think about. It could be related just to, just so like, I'm just one of those dogs that came out of the chute like this and I just have to learn how to contain myself. It was a huge issue with Willie. Willie had no arousal control and he would go from fear to rage just like that. He, Willie came as a puppy basically with, with extreme PTSD. So a lot of what we taught Willie was just to calm yourself down and how to calm yourself. Willie learned play bows a lot. I would teach him play bows. I would do a lot of work with him on calming. I would teach him a calming signal like chill, and be quiet. So I would do a lot of work beforehand with this dog because I think obviously you guys is like this dog is like you know gets really wild really fast. They obviously know that and understand it really well um, that they need to avoid those kind of situations. What I'd love to see is to add in his ability to do it himself and also to change whatever's going on in his life, whatever it is physiologically that's causing this. It could be diet, it could be medical, but that's something else to think about. So what we're going to try with him is we're going to try where's the dog. 
I don't know how it'll work, and I'll tell you right now, it may be that we get started and I go like, no, mm -mm, not appropriate, and we'll switch methods. Or we'll say, doesn't matter what method we're doing, this is not an appropriate setting for him. That's the fun about working dogs, is whatever happens, there's something to learn. And I, what, the reason I like working dogs live is, is exactly because you don't know what's gonna happen. It makes it a little hard sometimes on speakers. There are a lot of speakers who don't do it anymore because you never know what's gonna happen. I wanna see people work dogs, and I wanna see what do they do if that happens, you know? So I don't know what's gonna happen, but we'll find out. Hi, sweetie. So I'm gonna ask Ben, Ben, your job, I'm gonna be the dog first. And this is a great thing to do, by the way. You might wanna teach yourself watch or where's the dog without there actually being a dog there. Oh, there's a mama, mama's right there. Mama can stand right beside you. So, so what I'm gonna do, Ben, hi, is I'm gonna, I'm gonna act like I'm a dog. Do you have great treats? Reasonable. Here, let's give you, oh, let's give you some really good treats. And we just put them in your bait pack right there. Just put them all in there. Oh, boy. Good boy. Good boy. You're very good. Doing a very good job. Yes, you are. All right. So we're going to pretend that I'm a dog. So what I, what I want you to do, Ben, is, is you need to coordinate this. It's a little harder than watch in some, in some ways, is that he's going to say, where's the dog, just when you think he's about to look at me. So when you say, where's the dog, I'm going to move to get his attention. And I'm, or maybe even make a little noise. I'm going to do something to get his attention. And your job, Ben, is as soon as he looks at me, is to say, do you have a marker word? You say, yes, sir. Yeah. God, all right, perfect. So as soon as he looks at me, you're going to say yes. Um, and then I want you to back up a slight bit and give him a great treat. All right, are you good? You ready? All right. So, Annie, there it was, there it was. So, and, and there's nothing wrong, by the way, with just treat, with doing just what he did. The dog looked at me, he turned and looked back at him, and he gave him a treat. That's fine. That's totally fine. As a matter of fact, that's wonderful. Um, that's an auto watch, basically, except I'm not a dog, but that's okay. So we want to put this in this case, we want to put this on cue, all right? So as soon as, you st as soon as I hear that first word come out of your mouth, Ben, you're going to say, where's the dog? I'm going to move. And if he looks at me, you're going to say, yes, back up a little bit and give him a treat, all right? So you don't, 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 you, don't worry about him. You just say it, and I'll do something to try and get him to look at me. Where's the dog? Yes. And back up. Yes. Good. Good. All right. Yeah, it's a lot different standing up here with everybody. <laughs> it's a lot easier down there, isn't it? <laughs> I was just in a herding dog trial, and everybody in the stands was like, come by, walk up, lie down, come by, go right. And it's like it's really easy when you're not the one in the middle, right? So, so did you see that you might have said yes sooner? Yeah. As soon as his head turned. All right. So don't worry about him. I'll be the one to get him to look at me. All right. Um, as soon as you say, uh, you're going to be my cue. So when you say, where's the dog? I'm going to do something so he looks at me. Where's the dog? Yes. Good. That's all right. Anytime. Good, nice timing. Good job, Ben. Good boy. Good, Ben. <laughs> Good, Ben. Yay, Ben. All right. All right, so let's do it some more. Where's the dog? Yes. Nicely timed. Very nice. Good. Let's do it one more time, and then we're going to have a real dog. Where's the dog? Yes. Good. Okay, now, would I normally have him say, like, where's the dog, since we want it to be associated with the dog? It's like, yeah, well, that's not perfect, right? But, but so let's have you back away and um, stay on the stage for you, for your sake, but would you take him down the stairs for a minute, and we're going to have Kai come back up. If he could be so mellow, his mellifrousness. <laughs> His majestic mellifluousness. Hello, honey. What a good boy. And I'm using Kai because I know Kai is just like, ugh, Mr. Mellow Boy. 
Um, and he's very big, uh, and there's a reaction. All right, so, so would you take him down? Yeah, so I know. Okay, so we've learned something, right? We've got a threshold problem here. Just too close. Would you step right there? Um, what I would like to do is work with them this far apart, but that means it'll be hard to tape. Um, so I think what I'm going to do, I think what I'm going to do is we're going to use the stuffed dog for now, and then we might work with him later when we talk about what emergency measures when real life happens. So stay right there and just hang out with Kai. We're not going to use Kai for a minute. I need, I need my little doggy. I need my little doggy. Oh, sweetie. Oh, sweetie. Oh, I hurt my knee, so I'm not sure I can get back up again. Oh, let's see if I can. Wee! Yes, I can. Okay. Ooh, okay. I'm going to have to move this back to here. How's this? There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. So a little further away. So let's try, Ben, come up on the stairs. Yes, I know it's me. Yes, there it is. And off you go. And off you go. OK, so we're over threshold again, right? So this, this, this is a perfect example of this is not the setting to do this with this dog. And that's fine. That's OK, because we have lots of other methods up our sleeve. So what I would normally do with this dog right now is switch right now. But because we're sort of you know, on track in the seminar, what I'm going to do is I'll have you take him back. And then we're going to switch. Um, and bring him back later, because he'll be perfect for an another, kind of, another kind of work. So um, let's bring back, if we could, could we bring back uh, uh, Grendel? Let's bring back Grendel. Is Grendel still here? Oh, wait, stop for a second. Hello, 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 hello. You want to work with him? Sure. Turn. Or you want to? Why don't you? Why don't you? Hi, hi. So, um, hi there, sweetie. How you doing? So, do you do you get the where the dog? Where's the dog yeah. idea? You feel mm -hmm. comfortable with it? You want to try it? Yeah. She said, "I comfortable." No, she said, "I've never tried it ever in my life." So, no, I'm not comfortable, but I'll try it. So, you stay there. Um, good for you. I'm going. So, so your job is going to be as soon. I'm going to move that stuffed critter as soon as he looks. Um, as soon as you say, where's the dog, I'll move it. And then, what's, do you have a marker? Yes. There you go. Yes. All right. And then you're going to reinforce. So let's try. <laughs> where's the next little dog. Where's the food? Where's the food? Yeah. You really think he was right? Let's get Kai up. I think it's like, that's ah, not a dog. So back up a little bit. And sorry, Kai is going back and forth and back and forth. So yeah, go back a little bit more. And then as Kai comes up, and you're going to come up and stand right here where you were before, as Kai comes up, so take your sort of, you know, take, you focus on the dog as well. Keep him a little bit in your vision there. Yes, good boy. Very nice. Yes, good boy. Good boy. He would learn this. He's a great dog for these two methods. Um, some dogs are and some dogs aren't. Some dogs love to be on cue. They love learning new things. I had a um, herding dog, Lassie. Some of you know Lassie from my blog. Uh, Lassie would look at me when she was working, and one of the hand trainers I work with said, you must, you must stop helping her. You must let her work on her own. You must, she must stop relying on you. And so I just stayed really quiet a lot. And she got worse and worse and worse. And finally, I worked with a handler that made more sense to me. And she said, the dog needs you. You know, don't leave her there. You just dropped her. 
She's 200 yards away from you. She doesn't know what to do. Help her. The more you help her, the less she'll stop looking to you. So, and that turned out to be right. So this is a kind of dog who I think would love both of these particular on-cue methods. Um, so let's do a little bit more. And if, if you get no reaction, you might move a little bit. If she says, where's the dog, and gets nothing. There, nice timing. She said, yes, very nice. Why don't you just start moving a little circle right there? Yeah. Yes, very nice. Good. Yeah, very nice. So a little closer. Good. Yeah, good. And don't look. You notice as soon as she takes her eyes off, Grendel, Grendel stops staring at her so much. was maybe looking at the dog, right? Okay, let's have stop right there, and you're not going to go past this line right here, so you're going to stay right here, and now we're going to have an approach, a harder thing to do, right? So we're going to have the approach from the stimulus dog. Oh, good boy! <laughs> that was a very nice, lovely behavior. Did you see? He looked at the dog, and he looked right at her. That was lovely. So we're going to have you approach until I say stop, all right? Um, and basically, the, the, I'm going to say stop as soon as I see him look. All right, how you going, honey? So stop. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we need him to take his eyes off the dog for a little bit, move around a little bit. That's good. And approach. Stop. Good. Did you see him freeze? So a little bit like, oh, let's help him out of that. It's like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. There, good boy, good boy. So he's starting to offer this. They're like auto watches. <laughs> good boy, good boy, very good. So this is, I mean, I'll tell you what I do with this dog. Frankly, even though for a seminar, I'd love him to be the perfect where's the dog demo, I don't think he needs it. I think where's, I think watch is perfect for this dog. I don't think you need where's the dog for this dog, frankly, but you get the idea, right? Um, maybe we'll try it with Sky later, but, but you get the idea, right? Works really, really well with dogs who like do not want to look at them, afraid to look at them. I see. You're very fun. This is very good. Okay, off you go. Um, you go back around. Okay, and thank you, thank you. Thank you, Kai. Okay, so we are moving right along. Oh, time goes way too fast, way too fast. So, so those, those are on cue, right? So that's operant conditioning, positive reinforcement, and it's on cue. You are telling the dog to do something. You are giving it something to do that's an incompatible, more appropriate behavior that decreases the distance, decreases the intensity, and creates a, an emotion in the dog in which more and more and more he becomes classically conditioned. When I see another dog, I feel relaxed, I feel good. You push the envelope closer and closer and eventually you have Oscar or Willie or, or whoever. There are a lot of benefits to putting a behavior on cue. It gives you some control, it helps the dog. If you have a dog like Willie who originally, he, he, he couldn't deal with urine, you guys, you know? so. Um, so if I had another dog three blocks away, I had a dog who was completely out of his own control. So it helps you build your way up. But there are problems with it. Um, you can see they get really focused on the food. Um, and, and even though eventually you're going for an auto watch, which is what we started seeing, by the way, with Grendel, which, which um, you hadn't seen before, um, the dog eventually is making the right choice. You still have to teach it to get there. So there's a different way of using positive reinforcement and operant conditioning in which you, you do not teach the dog any cue, you let the dog make the choice. The dog makes a choice, you again, the way I like to do it, you work sub-threshold, 
You create a situation, there's a stimulus dog there, but you keep the dog's sub-threshold, just enough that the dog is aware of the other dog's presence. He's not barking and lunging, um, at least with the methods that I like to use. And then, and then you wait, you expose the dog, you wait for the dog to do something that you consider to be more appropriate, more relaxed, that decreases the confrontation, that diffuses things, that increases the distance between them. From the dog's point of view, what I like about both cat and bat is that they're looking for, um, they're looking for what some people call functional reinforcements, functional rewards. Ian Dunbar called them life rewards. Basically, if a dog is barking and lunging because he wants another dog to go away, then, then if you use one of these methods and wait for the dog to make a different choice than barking and lunging, they will learn. If I look over here, if I diffuse the situation and sniff the ground or turn my head away, either I get to leave or the other dog gets to leave. I get what I wanted. I bark lunge to get another dog to go away, but I'm just learning. Look what I'm learning. If I look away, I can also get the other dog to go away, or I can go away and increase the distance between us. I, my interpretation actually is that there are a lot of reinforcements in increasing the distance between dogs. One um, is you, not only have you done that, but you also let a dog move. And, and, and you'll see in both bat and cat, especially if you move the subject dog, you get to move and the dog gets to move. It's my belief that dogs are just crazed by how slow and boring and molasses-like we are. We're like, is there glue on their feet? What's wrong with them? Has anybody seen German Shepherds herd work as working German Shepherd dogs? You, those of you who haven't seen it, they're called a living fence. It's nothing like a border collie. They're basically a living fence. And they go trot, 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 trot. First time I went, I went with Sue Sternberg to her trainer and watched her and Vinny, who was a dog she picked up off the streets of New York City. And Vinny trotted a straight line for an hour. Trot, 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 turn, trot, 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 turn. And I watched that, and then I watched two other dogs do it. And I have to tell you, I felt like for the first time in my life, I understood a German Shepherd. The best reinforcement for German Shepherd is to move. That is what I was designed to do, is to move. Please keep me moving. Please do not let me move. So there can be a lot of reinforcement behind, besides increasing the distance. So let me talk a little bit about cat. I know um, cat is relatively new. Again, what I, what, what I give, give um, Jesus Rosales Torres and Kelly Snyder a lot of credit for is bringing up the concept of letting the dog make the choice, letting the dog come up with a behavior using these functional reinforcements, letting the dog come up with a behavior. So there's not food, there's not you, it's not about you, it's about the dog and the other dog. And I really like that, I think that has tremendous value. I will be really straight with you, when, when Cat first started, the, the, the stimulus dog was, um, was presented and the subject dog was, <clears throat> was allowed to go over threshold. So, and this is not new by the way, John Fisher did this 25 years ago or so. Basically, is, is you, he did it with dogs who were reactive to people, he did it with any kind of reactivity problems. And so basically, you would present a situation and the dog would everybody would just stand still. Nothing would change until the dog finally stopped barking and lunging. That behavior extinguished because it didn't get reinforced. The other people didn't go away. The other dog didn't go away. The behavior extinguished. So the dog finally they come up with a different behavior. They turn their head, they sniff the ground. Um, and that's what gets the reinforcement. So in cat, it's the stimulus dog, in the case of dog-dog work, the stimulus dog leaves. In the case of bat, it's more commonly the subject dog gets to get taken away. It's more, uh, there's flexibility there, which I really like too. I think flexibility is really important. So again, I like that there's sort of no training involved and there's no cue involved. It makes things clear between the, 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 the animals of interest, the two dogs in this case. Um, I am not a fan of letting a dog go over threshold, and that's just me. It's just a personal opinion. One, there's the rehearsal effect. 
which is a well-known effect, is that every, it's like a habit, you know? Um, every behavior creates what's like a channel of water through your brain. So there's a channel between neurons of your brain. So and just picking up a pen, there's, a, there's literally a line of travel of chemicals and electricity from neuron to neuron to neuron to neuron. And the more that behavior is, is rehearsed, the deeper the channel gets. It's really a pretty darn good physical analogy. It's like water running through a channel and it erodes a little bit and it erodes a little bit and it gets deeper and deeper and deeper and it gets harder and harder and harder to keep water from flowing that way. I don't like seeing dogs barking and lunging. I think it's very reinforcing for them to doing it. And, and it's very uncomfortable for the owner. So I just have to tell you, I'm not a fan of doing that. What I, my, ex, my own experience, and I'm saying not a cat trainer, but from my experience is from when they first started, they would let dogs go further over a threshold. They work farther back now, closer to what I would consider to be, is that what you guys have found? They work further back, less and less and less, so the dog is being less and less reactive. Um, <clears throat> So again, when the dog makes a choice, the problem behavior extinguishes, and then the stimulus dog leaves. There are similarities with that and BAT, or behavior adjustment training, that Grisha Stewart has, has um, started, in that, like, and, and I, I really like the fact that the dogs are kept under threshold. She, she basically works the same threshold line that I tend to, that I like to see, which is avoiding the rehearsal effect, avoiding dogs barking and lunging. Um, it again requires that you have a really good understanding of reading a dog and what their threshold is and what kind of triggers trigger the behavior. There are three stages of BAT. Um, so so there, is, there is owner involvement in that. Uh, once the dog is exposed, as soon as it initially, it's almost like where's the dog except not on cue. As soon as it looks at the other dog, it gets a click, and then the owner and the dog leave, or the subject dog leave. So the dog gets, if I just see another dog, no matter what I'm doing, but I'm sub-threshold, so I'm not doing a problematic behavior. If I see another dog, it's a long way away, I'm not too upset, I turn and I go away, or I see it, I get a click, and, and we turn and go away, and I get a treat. So she's setting up a really nice foundation that I think is really valuable. The next step is you expose the dog, but then you wait. Again, you're sub-threshold, but you're enough that the dog is maybe a little tense, maybe the mouth is shut, dog is a little tense, sees the other dog, eventually you wait, you get the head turn, mark, yes, or click, and then you um, leave Increase the distance, let distance be one of the reinforcements, get far enough away, and then you treat. So lots of reinforcement there. The distance increases, the dog gets a treat, secondary click reinforcement, gets to move, etc. Third phase is you wait, and Grisha switches to a verbal marker, no clicker, she uses yes, and then you leave no food. And what's good there is that you've taken food out of the equation, and what she argues, and I think there's a reasonable basis to this, is that by taking the food out, you allow more of a connection between the dogs. So when you do that and when you don't do that depends on the dog again and how close they are. So one of the things I love about it is that she also is flexible enough to allow dogs to gather information. So if they're looking at another dog and you can see them air scenting or looking curious, like what is going, if you just pull them away, you're just frustrating them. So there's a very much a sort of honor in all of the methods, I would argue, of um, auto watch and where's the dog and bat. There's a lot of honoring of the dog. If the dog is trying to tell you, I want to leave now, I want to sniff the ground, pay a lot of attention to it. Okay, here's a, I'm actually going to skip this. Um, but we're going to bring Sky up. Let's get Sky ready. Um, let's get Sky ready. And we're going to have a pirate be the, be the stimulus dog. So Sky, Sky is a dog who, who and I'll, I'll, just, I'll just cut to the chase now because we're running out of time, whose owner told me that the whole training thing, the watch and the clicker, it just makes her nervous. It makes her nervous. It makes her dog nervous. It's just not working for her. So it's a perfect candidate 
It's a perfect, perfect candidate in a lot of ways for, um, for this kind of treatment. Basically, we're going to let Skye make the choice. So Skye is a dog who is a bit of a bark lunger, um, is not comfortable around other dogs. Here comes Skye. Skye's a Sheltie. I mean, an Aussie, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, and Skye has always been, she's had him about four years. He's older, so she got him when he was very much a mature adult dog. He is very much afraid of other dogs. Let me get the microphone that I don't have. Does she have it? Oh, there we go. Thanks, Dennis. Here, wait, wait, Dennis, stop running. Thank you. <laughs> um, hi, sweetie. Oh, look at mama. Hi, honey. Hi, sweetie. So tell us, tell us what 10 is. What, what, what is? We were talking about 0 to 10. What is, what is Skye's worst behavior? Oh, little yawn. Uh, Skye's worst behavior is when a dog literally has to come up and be in his face. face yeah. Then he will lunge and snarl and do anything he can to either get the dog to leave nice. or for him to leave. Yeah. If he's in a situation, if he's off leash and he's in a situation where he has a choice, he will go the other way. He will, he will stay away from the dogs. I had one opportunity to be with him in a dog park. Not my choice. Yeah. <laughs> it, it happened. Gotcha. It just something happened. Life, life does that. <laughs> um, a German shepherd actually crawled under a fence to get to him. He snapped in the air. Yeah. The other owner, there were just two dogs in the park, and she said, bring him in. I explained, he's frightened of dogs, and he will attack. She said, well, dogs will work it out. And she seemed confident and willing to let my dog work ah, with this. Ah, that other person who knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> who speaks with a confident low voice. Well, I had, been, I had been told by people that he was an aggressive attack dog, and I didn't believe that, and I had worked with him thinking he wasn't. So I wanted the opportunity to prove that I was right in what I thought of him. And sure enough, long story short, we went into the dog park. He did everything he could to avoid being near any other dog. He stuck by me. The water bowls were probably 20 feet away. You could tell he wanted a drink of water, but there was a dog there. Yeah. And he waited and waited and waited. Finally, the dog left. He went and got a drink, watched out of his eye. When the dog started to come back, he ran right back to me. He will do yeah. anything he can yeah. to be away from another yeah. dog, which is a small problem because he's an agility dog. Yeah. So we're in the, right. surrounded by dogs a lot. Right. And he's 9 or 10 now. About 9 Had or 10. Had him for about 4 or 5 years. So one, talking about honoring the dog, this is one of these cases where it's, it's, you know, she wants to do agility. Um, he's done well in agility, right? Loves it. Um, Skye is not a very emotional dog, but when we get through running the course, he is yeah. jumping up. He's, he is, happy he's actually boy. having fun. You are having a good time. Come on. Oh, Come yeah. on. Skye so, does occur as one of those very serious dogs. So, so you know, can't you just sort of see heavy, sort of a heavy, serious dog? So you can imagine how happy it makes her to see Skye being exuberant and happy. You know, talk about reinforcement. So um, a couple, just a couple of things I would probably add if you were my client and we're doing a full consultation is, and I'm just going to throw this out here, so don't bite me. Okay. And, and, and I'm just going to throw this out here, and I just want you to think about it, because I don't know what's right. How could I possibly know what's right? But here's one thought. This is a dog she's, only, she's had four years. Heaven only knows what his life was like for all those other years. He has basically said, please, for the love of God, just don't make me deal with other dogs, right? You have other dogs at home? Yes, we do have a female. sort of ignores them? Um, exactly. Roxy is four. We've had her since she was yeah, 18 okay. months. And when she, she, do, she does try to go up and play with him, but Roxy is another Australian Shepherd, yeah. very much understands doggy behavior. And he does Sky not goes, play. Right. And so Roxy even dogs he knows, even familiar dogs, he does not want to play with, all right? So here's something I will just throw out for you to think about, and then we're going to work on, the, on that. Just to throw this out, he's 9 or 10. He loves agility. He doesn't like being around other dogs. Do you have a backyard? Posted stamp, yes. Posted stamp. <laughs> so one thing you might want to think about is he's titled, right? You've done that. Is there a way you could play agility at home yes, without we do. other dogs? We do. So, and, that's, and that's not a failure. I mean, the reason I bring that up 
is I don't know how many clients I've had who said like people are like on me that I can fix it, I can fix it, I can fix it. It's not always serving them to try and fix it, right? He's saying, I don't want to deal with other dogs. Okay, so, so that's just something for you to think about. But so let's bring up Pirate. Um, and, and now we're, we're creating a somewhat intensive a situation. You're going to bring Pirate up off the stage to start on the um, ground. Um, don't come up on the stage yet, if you would be so kind. And why don't you go off a little bit? You can just walk off and then hand your microphone away so you don't have to worry about it. So we're just going to bring Pirate up. Oh, big black dog. Oh, big black dog. Somebody asked me, are black dogs harder for other dogs to read? Well, they well may be. I mean, it's just visually harder to see contrast, to see ears up, you know. Um, to see their eyes sometimes. Hi, sweetie. Hi there. Why don't you come right here? Come right there. Hi, sweetie. Hello. I'm a very big dog. I'm a very big dog. And so your job is just to stay right here and keep Pirate busy. Okay. This is sweetie. Okay. So stop, stop right there. What we're going to do is we're going to bring uh, Sky up to right here, oh, stop there, don't, I'm sorry, don't come up yet, sorry. You're gonna bring Sky up right to here, and what we're gonna do is, again, we're gonna expose, oh yes, good dog, he just did it. We're gonna expose Sky so that we're, we're gonna make sure that he has made contact with that other dog, it's like there is another dog there, and we're gonna wait until Sky makes a choice. Until Sky makes a choice, it basically turns away, looks at the ground, relaxes in some way. If he was really nervous, it would just be opening his mouth. Um, and we're going to reinforce that. You are going to mark it, walk away. Um, you don't have a lot of distance. It would be better to have a lot farther to walk away. You're going to walk away and give him a treat. So you ready? So you're going to come to right here. And up you come. That's good. Yes, and leave. Go, 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 go. Don't fall down. No. Good okay. boy. Yeah. Good boy. So what I wanted the reinforcement there for bad training, you want the reinforcement to be getting the other dog to get farther away. And in this case, he's the one who gets to move. In some cases, it would be better if this dog moved. I think it's good personally to mix and match, to have it be both. Um, but, but so let's come up again, and what I want you to do is, stop right there for one second, is I want you to come up, wait, and, and we're going to go a little closer. You're going to come right to where I'm standing, and then you're going to wait. And he might do it beforehand, and that's okay. We're just going to ignore that. We're going to try and push the envelope a little bit, come a little bit closer, let him engage. The microsecond that he turns his head away, I want you to to um, mark it, but then you're immediately going to turn and leave. All right, ready? Stop there. Mm -hmm. Don't look at him. And you might want to move Pirate around a little bit. Yes, good boy, there it was, see it? That's good. And so he, you said he's had watch training before, right? Um, but you don't need to have watch training with this. You really, really don't. You absolutely do not. They will, if they're sub-threshold, they will make another choice. They'll look down, they'll turn and they'll look at you. Okay, let's do it again. And right to here. <laughs> yeah. Stop. That's not the, that's, oh, it wasn't the dog, that was a noise. There it is. Now he's focused on the dog. That's a horrible noise. Breathe. Good, nice timing. I don't know if you noticed, but, um, but she stopped breathing. <laughs> and, and yesterday, for those of you who were here, do you remember there was one case where a dog was, we were pushing the envelope, the dog was really close and he stopped breathing, Everybody in the audience did too. I was watching. <laughs> I was. I was watching. And when the dog finally opened his mouth, you could hear it. People went, <sighs> <laughs> be really thoughtful about your breath. Really, really thoughtful. 
All right, good boy. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. I'm going to have you come to here. What? Stop. Stop there. There. And did you hear the whines? All right, threshold. So we know what, with this dog in this context, this was the distance, all right? So this is the distance you want to work at, okay? And then in another context, you might back up a little bit, or you might start here the next time, depending on the context. Is that all clear? Makes sense? Okay. All righty. Let's, um, let's, let's put Sky back, because I want to end with, um, uh, quickly, I want to talk about, I mentioned there was one use of, that I'm comfortable with, of positive punishment. Uh, and it's Trish King's method. No, nobody ever yells. The dog is never, never jerked. Um, there's nothing that we would call aversive, except it is aversive to the dog. Basically, this is for dogs who are really clingy. Can you say German Shepherds? <laughs> These are for dogs who are very focused on their owner. It actually could work with Skye. It would not, I wouldn't do it with Grendel. I did, wouldn't do it with Yogi, even though they really love their owners. But very dependent clingy dogs, especially, this works really well with it. Basically, the dog is on two leashes, a regular leash, a long line. This takes a lot of setup. There's another dog. The dogs are moving towards each other. The owner is holding the regular leash. As a safety device, a trainer, a professional trainer, not a friend, professional trainer is holding the long line as a safety device. Because what's going to happen is if the dog reacts and goes over threshold the, to this dog approaching, the owner is going to throw the leash such that it lands on the back of the dog, a tactile stimulus, and then she's going to turn and run away. That's why it's called abandonment training. You are on your own. You bark and lunge, I am out of dodge. And, and with some dogs, they don't even notice. <laughs> And with other dogs, they're like, oh, where'd she go? Where'd she go? And you go one more time, and by the third time, they can walk right by another dog. They stop barking and lunging. So it's positive punishment because you're adding something in to decrease the frequency of a behavior. It works really, really well and really, really fast on just the right dog. If it hasn't worked by, by trial three or four, it's not going to takes a setup, but it's a very, I, I, I think it's a very useful tool to have in your toolbox. So, okay, let's talk about safety measures. Let's talk about, let's talk about um, life happening, basically. Um, this, is, this is for when life is not the DVD you thought you rented. Because all of life, as we all know, is not a training session, right? All of life is not a training session. So you can't, how can you always create a world in which your dog is always sub-threshold? And the answer is, you can't. <laughs> you just can't. You can't do it. It's not possible. Um, so there are two, two, two things you can train a dog to do that are very, very helpful, extremely helpful. And one of them, I just call it the emergency U-turn. It is not just helpful for the owner, it's very, very helpful for the dog. Um, let's bring up, uh, this might bug up, buzz up Yogi. You know, just a thought here, a teaching moment. I was going to use Yogi for this because he needs it, but you know, but, but here's my thought. Emergency U-turn, you're walking along and you go, turn, and you move really fast. What's going to happen with Yogi? He's going to buzz up. He's going to buzz up. He needs it, but it's, we shouldn't do it. You see why? We shouldn't do it. So who do you think we should do? Grendel or Sky? I think we do either one. You want to do Grendel? Can we? Grendel, come on up. <laughs> we have Grendel again. Um, so, you know, I'm going to run out of time. I really, I'm frustrated because I really want to work Yogi. It's just not the setting. You know, um, but Yogi needs to learn this really, really well. And um, what we can try, and I'm going to go over noon, I should warn you, what we can try with Yogi is the emergency sit-stay. I'll just get him up here. Hi, sweetie. Yes. Oh, thank you. 
Hi, sweetie. Hi, darling. So actually, I don't need this. I don't. I don't. I'm just going to show you what it looks like. This is the simplest thing you will either ha ever have to learn or train. And it's so simple that the problem is, is that if you're teaching this to a client, they'll be like, we don't need to practice this. Yes, you do. Yes, yes, you do. Basically, you don't have to practice very often, but you have to practice it enough that you do it without thinking. And that's why you have to practice it. This is like marine boot camp. You know, one of the reasons that people in that kind of training um, are taught things sort of over and over under stressful situations, it's, it's because that should be their default. You want that to be your default. You don't want to have to have this long cognitive process go on. It's like, now what am I supposed to do now? There's, there's, there are two ways, there, your brain works a lot of ways, but in one sense, there are two ways your brain works. One is, is it goes to the thalamus, which is the control center of your brain, and then it goes to all these pro cognitive processing areas. And it's like, oh, which choice should I make? What should I do? What should I do? There's another in which it just, the thalamus sends it right to your amygdala, the emotional processing center, or somewhere else, and it basically, you do something and then you think about it. We've all done it, right? You just sort of do something, and as you're almost done, you go like, oh, all right. Um, it's the emergency backup system, basically. You don't have time to think about it. Just do it. You don't think about it. So, so what this needs to be, this is the emergency U-turn, right? This is like, holy crap, there's a dog coming, and I didn't expect there to be. You know, the, the, this is the... This is the um, when someone has three, I don't know, let's name them, out of control golden retrievers, you know, and she's going like, walking towards you, going like, they're fine, you know. And I had a client who said, Parvo, we have Parvo. <laughs> you can try rabies for people who don't, rabies, we have rabies. Um, so, so you, you don't know how to, this is the emergency U-turn. So you need to master it. And it's really simple. But again, I'm just going to do it, and then you're going to do it. Hi, sweetie. So you're not teaching anything your dog doesn't know how to do. And you can put it on cue or not. Um, some people say, let's go. Some people say, turn. I have a client who says, I'm being taped, so now I'm. <laughs> more constrained than I usually would. She says, oh, bleep. That's her turn signal. Because that's how she feels when she sees another dog unexpectedly. Is, oh, no. Oh, no. I actually, I actually did have a client who said, oh, no. But she said it really happy. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hi, honey. Hi, sweetie. How you doing? How you doing? Let's go. Let's go. Oh, 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 what you got? Oh, my goodness gracious. So he was like, well, why should I come to you? Because I smell food over there. So I don't want it to be the leash, right? So that wasn't, so, so we need to bait ourselves up here. Look what I have. <gasps> Toys work really well with playful dogs. Let's go. Oh, boy. And he can't run hard because this is slippery or rust fast. Oh, <gasps> this is fun. Let's go. Boy. Boy. <laughs> So there are a couple of things I'm doing I'm going to have you practice. You're walking along. You are not looking at your dog. La, da, 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 da. You say, let's go. And then you bend your knees and you pivot because that is a great signal to your dog. Those of you in agility, you know, right? This is a huge signal. Bend your knees and you pivot. Now, you don't have to do this a lot. Every once in a while, I go somewhere and I see somebody who's obviously one of my students going, you know, it's like the Groucho March thing. You know, you do not need to do that. Um, but you just, boop, boop. oh, it smells so good. Okay. When you don't have control like this, you just cover your butt. You say, okay. <laughs> You're only sniffing because I told you. Because I told you to. But what is he sniffing, by the way? It's not for food, right? So this is actually really good for him. And again, scent, scent, scent is a wonderful social bridge. Use it as much as you possibly can. Let them smell the other dogs. So one way to do all of the methods we're working on is the first thing to do, bring a dog here, have him walk around, have him go. Let Brendel come and sniff that area. He doesn't have to urinate. He can still smell them. Hi, sweetie. You want to do it? You want to play? So why don't you go that way? And 
and turn back towards us. Good, good boy, good boy, and treat. Good. And again. Good. Good boy. Good boy. Now, so that's, that's it, basically. Um, the, the one thing that is important to add on is the way you say it. Because when you're panicked, how are you going to say it? Right? I learned this from Ian Dunbar. Ian Dunbar talked about how in one of his classes a long, long time ago, um, he, he yelled out some crisis and told everybody to lie their dogs down. And everybody went, ah, ah, and the dogs were like, what? So I did it in one of them. I had an advanced um, uh, class at my farm. All the dogs were off leash in a huge, huge area out in the country. And the sheep were in another, just behind one fence. And everybody knew my sheep were there and that it was important that the dogs and the sheep don't mix randomly. Um, and so on week three, we've been working on emergency lie downs. On week three, we were taking a break and everybody was relaxed. They were chatting, the dogs were sniffing and I just screamed, I'm lying through my teeth. I just screamed, the sheep are out, down your dog, down your dog, the sheep are out. And you should have heard it. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and I'm as bad as anybody, believe me. I, you know, it's, there are not many people who have total control over their emotions and their voice at all times. So I want you to do it one more time, and I want you to do like, let's go. OK. Good, good, good. Good boy. Good, good, good. Just stay right here. We're going to do some more. So um, does that make sense? OK. So because we're getting tight on time, I'm just going to keep the handsome Grendel up here. Oh, my honey. Hi, sweetie. How you doing? How you doing? I hate to not have Yogi come up again, though. Um, I'll tell you what. Let's, you guys okay with 15 minutes? Yeah. Are you all right with going over? Are you okay? I, I'd like to get Yogi up for another time. I want it to go well, so we're going to end when Yogi needs it to end. So if Yogi is not appropriate for teaching what I want to teach, that's okay. We'll just... We'll just deal with it, all right? Let me, actually, you know what? Let me, yeah, I have a good idea. <laughs> it's an idea. So we're going to illustrate it with Grendel, and then we'll try it with Yogi, and we'll see how we go. Um, hi, sweetie. How you doing? So the emergency sit-stay is when you're doomed, right? The, the three goldens are off-leash, okay? And they're running at you. And you have a dog who's dog dog aggressive. And I know with Willie, I know it's a nightmare. It's not fun. It's horrible. And it means you stop walking very much. You totally change. It's really tough. So here's what's called the emergency sit stay. It's an emergency measure. It takes training and it takes practice. And it will not work if you don't proof it with another dog. Don't use a dog you don't know. You know, don't go into the, you know, the neighborhood where they fight dogs. And see, so let's see how it works. Um, use a dog you know. I used to use Lassie, and I could start and stop her at any point. So it'd be like, Lassie, that'll do. And she'd run, I'd, and I'd just visually stop her. Um, uh, so you need to set up with a setup dog, with a dog who can help you out that you have control over. Hi, sweetie. And then you're going to basically, how's Grendel's stay? Pretty it's pretty good. Well, good. Sit. Stay. Oh, that's very good. That's very good. Yes, it is. What happens if I back up? That's good. That's very clever. Now, I don't care that he got up so much right now with his face. That was nice. Will he sit beside you? Grindel, sit. Oh, now, and that's the first phase of this because most dogs want us. We, this is where we teach them. So what, they th what do they think sit means? It means come to your owner, look at their knees or their crotch, depending on how big they are, and then get down, right? So the first thing to teach is a sit where you are both in parallel, you know, like an obedience kind of sit. Hi, sweetie. Good boy. See, I'm using my body a little bit as well. Good boy. So it's not that he doesn't know how to sit. He knows how to sit. I'm just making him comfortable sitting here. 
Yes. Back lure. That's good enough. Yeah. Come on. Sit. Click. Oh, good boy, jackpot. He didn't go around. Sit. Click. Good boy. That's nice. That's a nice start, right? So you get to sit here. Sit. Stay. <laughs> he said, what are you guys laughing at? So then, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cover your butt, right? So, so the next step is, next step is always just work a dog by itself and don't talk to anybody, right? So the next step is to proof him from sitting beside and maybe a little behind you, and then you're going to walk one step forward. Sit. Click. Good boy. Stay. Yeah. Oh, good. Good boy. Good boy. Because I'm going to want to walk three steps forward eventually. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Wendell. Sit. Click. Good boy. Stay. Good. Oh, that was a very smart boy. You are a very good student. Yes, you are. I'm going to now change. See, I'm looking at him. I'm going to start looking this way. You are. Oh, I would love to have one of those all the time when I'm training. <laughs> Man, that would be really cool. Okay. Yeah, that was very nice. Now I'm going to add in movement, but not moving away. Sit. Click. Good boy. You thought I dropped it. I know. I didn't. It's actually here. <laughs> it is. It is. Good. Stay. Whoop. Not a problem. Not a problem. Not a problem. Sit. Stay. Good boy. Good boy. Uh -uh. See? Okay, that was the one, right? Because what you're going to do eventually is you're going to go sit, stay, walk, walk, to facing the approaching dog, and you're going to take a bunch of treats if you have them, and you're going to throw them such that they hit the dog in the face. And they're going to land in the grass or the gravel, and the dog's going to go like, holy moly, it's raining chicken. <laughs> and while they're eating it, you're going to slip away. I learned that from Trish King. And as soon as I saw her do that, it was like, thank you, Trish. Queen King, I'm going to go, thank you. And so here's, here's, um, Hi, honey. Hi. So we have one dog up beside you. Proof them to stay as you move forward and do this. Then proof them to stay while you move forward. Do this with another dog stationary. Then eventually do it with a dog coming at you. Now, here's what my clients think when they hear that. Are you crazy? <laughs> right. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Oh, yeah. I could teach my dog to do that. Are you out of your mind? And here's the cool thing. It works. It really can work. Does it work every time? Of course not. You have to practice it. You have to prove through these steps. You have to have the dog sitting here. You have to prove through you moving. You have to prove through you throwing food. You have to prove through a real dog coming at you. But I'll tell you, I have had not hundreds, but I've had a couple of dozen clients who said, I did it, but I never believed it would work, and it did. I am astounded. I am absolutely astounded. Okay? So let's, let's thank Grendel. And then, yeah. And then once Grendel is back, we're going to bring Yogi back up again. So I want to do a little bit. I want to end by working Yogi a little bit. So my worry with Yogi, so as soon as Grendel's in, we'll bring Yogi back up. We may use a stimulus dog, we may not. I don't know, I'll let you know. My worry with Yogi is that he's so aroused, is that just about anything we're going to do is put him over the edge. Um, 
So we're going to see. We're going to just sort of test the boundaries and see what we can do. I would like to end with a win. Um, again, the U-turn, uh, by the way, I should, I should add in here while Yogi is coming up. The U-turn, you use it to prevent a blow up, but you also use it when you do get a blow up. So, because that's going to happen, right? Bar, rah, 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 life happens. Now what do I do? You can't always set it up exactly the way you want it. So if your dog barks and lunges, I want you to say, let's go, walk away, but don't treat. So the dog is getting reinforced in one sense in that they're increasing the distance between them and the dog. But what are you going to do? Stand there and say, would you stop and not move until this behavior extinguishes? It's not going to happen, right? The other dog's going to go away. Um, so from my perspective, the best thing to do is get that dog out of a situation, put him where he is at a lower arousal level, give him an opportunity to regroup a little bit, and then ask him to do, then ask for watch, then ask for where's the dog, then wait for a voluntary head turn, etc. Make sense? Hi, Yogi. Hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. Hi there. Hi there. Where's Ben? We need, or you used to, you know Yogi? Yeah. Oh, good, she knows Yogi. Okay. Good, good. Hi, sweetie. You want to try it? No. You, no. <laughs> she says, Carly says, what are you doing to me? You know Carly, good boy. I'm guessing his sit-stay is not like the best in this context, right? What do you say? What do you say, Ben? We use stop. You stop? No good boy. So I'm gonna, I want to try a U-turn. Let's try an emergency U-turn. And the trick with him is I want you to pivot pretty fast, but when you, when you um, are 180 degrees away, I want you to walk relatively slowly, because if you start running, I think you're going to hype him up. All right? Um, so I'm going to pretend to be the dog because I think we need to start this without a dog. It's going back to those steps I was talking about. Um, he already alerted to the stimulus dog. Right, I mean to the stuffed dog, <laughs> to the stuffed stimulus dog. So, so we're gonna do it without a dog around. You ready? And now. Good. Great trainer, right? Wonderful, great fast signal, and then she slowed right down. Wonderful, wonderful. I think we have a professional trainer here. That was really nice, Carla. Carly? Carly, right? That was lovely. That was lovely. You want to try it on a cue? What cue would you guys like to use? Holy moly? This way? Okay. Let's try this way. Okay, let's try it. <clears throat> And now, good, very nice, very nice. So let's do it with, oh, I don't know if I can, oh, I'll get it, I'll get it, I will, I will, I will. Ugh. Imagine life with a baby puppy and, and a guy who popped his bicep off of his bone and me who fell and smashed my knee and was on one leg. <laughs> it was an interesting June. Very interesting tune. Okay, so I'm going to set Ginger right here backwards. Um, and I'm presuming you're probably going to get a bark on a lunge. And so what I want you to do, um, prevent it if you can. As soon as he sees it, I want you to say, I want you to say, let's go. Um, if he barks and lunges, I want you to turn and say, let's go. Okay, one size fits all in this case. Okay, let's give it a try. <laughs> Somebody working on healing? <laughs> Don't get too close. Back up a little bit. Back up a little bit. Back up a little bit. Try taking your eyes off of him. There. 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 And one of the things that happens with dogs who are so focused on you is they get surprised. You know? They're like, holy, holy moly, 
Well, if you've been looking, honey, you know, right? You want to know what it's in. So, so he knows it's there now. Good, 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 good. Good. And so what actually happens? Stop right there. Bye, bye, bye. So, so what actually happened? What actually happened? They came up on the stage. Yogi saw the dog. What did he do? He looked at her. He looked right at her. Yay, yay, there we are. An auto watch or an appropriate behavior in bat training, right? That was a wonderful thing. And she did just what she ought to do. She backed away and she reinforced him. So you see how all these things start mushing together? Do you see why I got to the point I went like, oh, wait, you know? But again, how you use it and what you use it and when um, is important. So wait a minute. I was about to do another one, but we ended on a good note, didn't we? I should stop now, shouldn't I? Yes. Good girl. Good girl. No, let's do one more. Let's make it all go to heck in a handbasket. <laughs> OK, I talked about that. So, so I'm just going to end by saying one. Um, I have so many clients who have this problem. And as you know, I had this problem. Some of you know who read my blog that I had a new dog, I had a puppy. He and Willie started setting each other off. They started barking and lunging at everything, including people, which Willie never did. And this is a sound little puppy. There's nothing wrong with this puppy. They were literally setting each other off. He found Willie's very, very thinly buried neuro neuroses and anxieties, and they just started buzzing each other up. Um, so Willie is now wonderful. He's like not only as good as he was before, he's better than he was before. In this particular case, as those of you know, I ended up rehoming this puppy, which was quite controversial, I will tell you, for some of you who don't read the blog. Um, and, and I would never have done that if, if literally like this karmic piece of toast, this much better home than me came up for this dog. People who work dogs all the time, they were tired, they work dogs on sheep, they had a pack of six dogs, and I believe that that's what Hope needed. He's doing great, he's doing wonderfully, Willie is doing wonderfully. Obviously, rehoming is not always what you want, or is not always, and is often not the best situation. But again, going back to Willie when he was little, he was a mess, you guys. And so, so the reason I say that is I just want you to take heart because there are a lot of people struggling and having a really hard time and feeling really guilty and bad. It's not you. It's not your fault. Um, you know, there's so much we can do. There's so much we can do. So what I hope, I'm going to end with a video um, to make us all smile, but what I hope is, is that you've, what you've taken away are some ideas of, um, of different approaches where you can basically end up with the same thing, which is a dog who sees another dog and basically in some canine kind of way says, look, there's another dog. So this is just a little play scene. There we go. This is just to make us happy. This is Willie and a little puppy. <laughs> um, who he did not need any watching, any auto watching, any anything to. They met a few yards away. And he wasn't even bothered by the vest, which I thought he might be. Very different play style. Of course, she couldn't run very much. She was young, and it was really pretty deep snow. She did a lot of leaping over and a lot of mounting. Anyway, so that's just, that's just to remind us all that there is life and fun and joy and as a little sneaky reminder of what we're going to talk about for the rest of the day. So, <laughs> so.